This week we're going to look at a few more applications of graph theory. Um, one thing we're going to do is first look at directed graphs. So last week we discussed regular graphs which had vertices and edges, but here on a directed graph we're also going to add arrows to some edges, possibly all edges, and these arrows are going to indicate the direction of an edge. And you know, one application in which they could arise is if you have a one-way street instead of a, a regular two-way street. Um, so directed edges are appropriate when the relationship is one-sided rather than symmetric. Um, and we're just going to, well, I guess, I guess I'm going to do this first and then I'll say what I was about to say. So let's look at this example. Uh, the following street network can be modeled by a digraph. So here we have a bunch of building type things. And here we're just going to look at this middle portion of this street network. So up here we have a two-lane road, uh, one going this way, one going that way. Here we have another two-lane road. Here we have another two, or uh, here we have another two-lane road, one going that way, one going this way. But connecting them, we have two one-way roads. So let's model this with a graph. So we have these four intersections of these roads. Um, one type of application that this could arise is if you're uh, looking to plow the roads of snow. Like right now we have 15 inches of snow outside. Um, and if you have two-way roads, then snow plows are going to have to uh, obey the direction of traffic. Um, and in doing that, we would like to find an Eulerian circle, or an Eulerian circuit. Um, but we'll talk about that more once I construct this graph. So here we have these four nodes up here connecting this section to this section. Well, we're going to have one edge going that way and one edge going this way. And we'll draw that like that. So we have an edge going that way with an arrow and an edge going the other way with an arrow. Similarly, down here we have the same type of situation. One arrow going that way, one arrow going that way. But co connecting these, we have on this side one arrow going down. On this side, we have one arrow going up. And now, um, with regular graphs, we had a relatively simple way to figure out whether a graph had an Eulerian circuit, an Euler circuit. Um, we checked whether the valences were even, and if they were all even and it was connected, we knew an Euler circuit existed. For a digraph, the conditions are more complicated, and we're not going to cover them. Um, one necessary, although not sufficient, condition is that all of the nodes do have to still have even valence. Um, that's, there are digraphs with all nodes having even valence which do not have Euler circuits. Um, this one all of the nodes have odd valence, so immediately we know there's no Euler circuit. I mean, you could try to find one, uh, you're not going to be able to find one. Um, but if, well, on the worksheet there's a question, find an Euler circuit in a digraph, um, and you don't have to check whether one exists. I will give you an example in which one exists. Um, the, uh, I mean, if you want, you can look up the conditions. Um, there are two other conditions, and it, it involves the in-degree and out-degree of each vertex, and it defines another type of connected component. And um, I don't think getting into that is all that uh, important for here. But the example on the worksheet where it says find an Euler circuit, well, you still, in finding it, you have to hit every edge, but you also have to obey the arrows. So in finding an Euler circuit, if you start here, well, you can go down, you can go over, you can go up, you can go over, you can go over again, but you can't cross against an arrow. You must follow the directions of an arrow. Um, so uh, try that example. It's, it's going to be, it's one like this where it's, uh, here's a street network, construct a digraph, and then find an Euler circuit in it. 